So, Father, I just want to thank you for this moment that we share together, <clears throat> that I share with my brothers and sisters. And, and as we share in this moment, we ask for your kairos of your spirit. <clears throat> and we, we pray that this would interchange with our life in such a way that we would be changed in a moment, that we would hear <clears throat> deep in our hearts and that our minds would be able to grapple with the revelation of your truth in such a way that, Lord, it just is not knowledge, but transformational in our life. And we all said? Amen. I have, uh, as I was sitting there and worshipping and stuff like that, um, I had these phrases, words coming at me. And, and the, the, the first one really is out of Job. Good old Job. And uh, it's sort of like one of those, one of those words that, that I, I feel that there's a word that goes with it. Like the Lord is saying to me, now this could be to any one of us, anyone, even me included. But this is very important to people that, that, that are facing things or stuff relational, uh, personal, whatever. And, and the word is this. The Lord says, I am more than enough. Amen. I am more than enough. And he said to me this morning, say to them, you know, he is more than enough. And, 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 and this is what the Spirit of the Lord gave me just here this morning. He said, the Spirit of God has made me like the Spirit of God has made me. This is out of Job 33, 4. The breath of God gives me life. Do you like that? The breath of God gives me life. Some of you need to know that this morning. It's not what you've got, but it's the breath of God that gives you life. So I want you to take that. You're facing that which is outside of your control. Or maybe it's in your control in some measure, but you are facing. Some of you are facing issues. We're all facing issues, but this, like, it looks like it's totally beyond you. The Lord was saying to me, to say to you, He is more than enough. And that it is the breath of God that's made you. It's not all your history, it's the breath of God. And it's the breath of God who wants to bring life for you this morning. Give me a wave if that's you this morning. The Lord is speaking that he wants to actually breathe fresh life into you. Isn't that good? And the other phrase is, is, is it comes like this. For some of you, this is a year of turning for you. This is a year of turning. And the Lord would say to you this morning through me, it's time for you to turn. Turn from to. And to turn in your hearts means that you actually are going in a what? A different direction. And for some of you, you have, the Lord's been speaking to you about turning away from stuff or turning to stuff and you are still back at the intersection of knowledge and action. And the Lord would say to me to say to you this morning, it's time to turn. I want you to say that. It's time to turn. Give me a wave if you know what I'm talking about this morning, some of you. Yeah. <clears throat> the Lord is saying it's time for you to turn. And the Lord is saying he is more than enough. Why don't you just cement that in, in the spirit by turning to someone next to you and just saying, the Lord, he's more than enough. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 
I want to read the word, the, the, this pastoral word that I've got this morning really comes out of, it's out of Isaiah, but I don't want you to read the word, I'm going to read it over you because I want you to shut your eyes, nothing very religious about shutting your eyes, but I want you to hear the word that I'm going to read out of Isaiah this morning, I want you to hear it as the Lord uh, speaking to you, you got that? And, and it's from Isaiah 41, verse 10. So just shut your eyes. Again, it's nothing religious. It's just wanting you to close in on the moment. I'm into moments this morning, okay? Close in on the moment. Because we miss moments in with God. Because we're always racing to the next thing. And this is what the Lord would say to you. This is the, the Lord who gives you breath is saying this to you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I read it again. So, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I, the Lord, will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know, we are familiar, if you've been around church life for a while, we're very familiar with the story of Moses and the Exodus and all that wonderful stuff that happened there. And you find that in Exodus chapter 14. It's, it's an amazing story, isn't it not? It, it's a story of what? Deliverance, signs, wonders, miracles, guidance, provision. He takes them out of captivity and he sets them on a freedom march. Probably one of the first big freedom marches there ever was. And, and you know, they come out of this captivity into this amazing demonstration of God. And I heard this morning from here that you want some of that demonstration again here and in your life. You know, Incredible as it may seem to us today, but, but when Israel encountered the difficulties in the wilderness right after this most awesome display of God's power and provision, they wanted to what? Hightail it back to Egypt. They wanted to hightail it back to the very thing they got freed from. At the first sign of a difficulty... They wanted to return to their, their old lifestyle. They wanted to return back into slavery. They wanted to return to the comfort of the known. The zone of the known, if you like. Why? Well, it's really quite simple. And I think it's something that we in the 21st century slip into all the time. You know, the security of the known is more predictable. The security of the known is less threatening, less challenging than the challenges of the unknown. The uncharted horizons that lie before us, even in God, for they were truly in God. He had delivered them. Yet they were comfortable with their predictability to the point where they were wanting to go back to slavery then to chart new course of action with their God. So let me ask, what about you today? Does the security of the known hold you captive? <clears throat> Does the security of the known, what you know, the predictability of your life, does it hold you captive? Listen to what the Lord said to them 
Not once, <coughs> but twice. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. Meaning, whatever's confronting you, don't panic in front of it. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will never fail you and neither will he abandon you. You know, you might remember um, he had made similar, and when you read in the, the Old Testament, you find lots of stories here, but you, you find one particular story like this, similar instruction to a great general. Do you know his name? Joshua. Joshua. When he was leading the children of God, you remember, he went into the promised land. Moses didn't get in there, but he actually took it up and went in there. And this great general, this great man of faith, Joshua, in I think chapter, in chapter 1, four times in one chapter. No, not once, four. Four times. He said similar things. He said to Joshua what? Be bold. Be courageous. Don't fear. Don't be discouraged. Oh, it's okay for you. I'm with you though. That's all it is. He said, I'm with you. And the reason I think it's very, he said that to, the, to them, I think it's also very relevant for us today as, as we, we find where we are in our day because it, it's taking, it's when we take specific action in the face of the fear and the uncertainty that we begin to overcome it. Knowledge won't just do it. Why? Why do you think he was saying these things to Joshua? Why do I think He's saying it to you today. Because I think the title of my message to you today would be, it's time to leave the comfort of the known and step into the unknown with God. It's time to leave your comfort zone. It's time to change your perspective. <clears throat> so why? Why? See, three simple reasons why. When we take that action, like he said to Joshua, you need to step into this. Number one, when we challenge our fears, we learn best to master them. When you and I challenge our fears, we learn best to master those fears. When we wrestle with the problems of life, they soon begin to lose their hold on us. This is the action that we have to take. To take the knowledge, let it become transformative in our being by taking action. That's why he said to Joshua, be bold, be strong. And if you look at the Hebrew word in verse 31, um, 36, 31, 6 that I read out, the, the Hebrew in the terms, you know, be bold, it's a bit like, um, you know when a baby is crawl, it learns to crawl, right? And, and they get up and they fall and they get up and they fall. You know that? And you've got these loving parents and aunties and uncles going, come on, you can do it, you can do it. And you get up, come on, you can do it. And, and they wobble, don't they? Well, the, if you take the, this Hebrew word in or the, the, the expression, it's about wobbling your way to courageousness. It's wobbling your way to being bold. So how are you wobbling today? Because when you, when you came here this morning, you didn't wobble in by falling down. You walked straight in, didn't you? Because you've learned to walk. Why? Because you put action to it. And so what he was saying to Joshua, you need to put action to this. What he was saying to the people of God, if you want to be bold and you want to be courageous, then you've just got to stand up. You've got to challenge the things that actually are the fears that hold you captive and you've got to wrestle with the difficulty because as you wobble, you overcome. You know, when you and I dare to confront things that scare us, we open the door to the future. Now get that. Very important. When we confront the things that scare us, we open the door to the future 
And when we open the door to the future, that releases fresh opportunities. Remember, our God is the God of around the corner. He's the God beyond the closed door. He's there. You know, like if this is a corner, I'm here and I'm battling this stuff. I just got to keep walking with it. Because you see, as soon as I get around the corner, who's there? God. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And we often say, he's the same. He's the same on this side of the fear. I grapple with it. I walk with it. When I get around, he's what? He's the same on the other side. Remember, he is the God of around the corner. You may not know what's around the corner, but in him you have victory. You know, someone once said that we we need to take the bull by the horns until we have him screaming for mercy. (laughs) I like that. You've got to take the bull of what confronts you. The resistors, the fear, the, as, the things that actually cause you to not do what you are called to do in God. Grab hold of them, confront them, challenge them until they scream at you to let them go because they want to run away from you. You know, that's just, that's just what God, you know, God wants us to, to be able to walk free of some of the things that bind us up. He wants us to confront it like Joshua confronted. He wants us to challenge these things. You know, don't let fear and that which is an obstacle to you become the last word on your life. Wrestle it. Gain victory over it. Joshua did. Many great men and women of faith have done And you and I today in the 21st century, young and old, are called to do the same thing. Almost, almost, without exception, every man and woman in the Bible that God called to step out and do great things for him had to deal with feelings of inadequacy. Feeling inadequate to respond, feeling inadequate to the challenge, the things that God was calling him to. But how did God respond to them? How does he respond to you and I today when, when we, you know, fall into making a similar response of fearing, wanting to go back, wanting to flee the things that he's freed us from? Listen to what he said, again, from Isaiah 41.10. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious or righteous right hand. Friends, I don't know about in your life, but definitely in my life, two of the biggest fears are failure and criticism. Failure and criticism. And also you will know if you've lived enough years on this planet that they really never completely go away. If you're honest. If you're honest with me this morning... Failure and criticism, no matter how spirit-filled you are, they dog you. Therefore, we have to deal with them. We have to learn how not to allow them to guide you, not to allow those things to limit your capacity in God and to stop you from stepping out into the things that God is calling you to. True as I stand here today, I can say this. You and I can overcome them, yes, but they will show up whenever you face the next challenge in your life. Come on. Do I have an amen? Amen. Like in a couple of weeks' time, I'm in Russia. And you know the warmest it's going to get in Moscow. (laughs) Minus six degrees. I hate the cold. That's a challenge for me. 
But it's not just that. It's a whole new horizon for me. And can I say <clears throat> that I still have to deal with this whole area that I'm speaking to you about this morning. No matter how far I travel on in God. For if these things, if I stay in the predictability, if I stay within the comfort, if I stay with locked within this system where I feel more comfortable with the security of the system, I will never stop, step out into the opportunities that God has for me. If I, do, if I want the comfort of the known, the zone of the known, I will never be able to step through the door of the new horizons that God has for me. And he has them for every one of you. You don't have to go to Russia. <clears throat> you could go anywhere else you like. Maybe the Gold Coast. <coughs> I was there yesterday with 60 people doing prayer around all the venues for the Commonwealth Games. And jumped on the plane to come down to you good people this morning. So how is um, accepting fear as a part of life's journey, you know, instead of running from it, how, you know, we have to, how, how, how do we do that? We have to do that. We have to deny it, its capacity to limit us. We have to learn how to conquer these things in God. Isn't it true that as we look back at what you've already come through, and I look back over my life, we soon realize that, the most, that, that most times failure has, hasn't meant permanent damage. In fact, in a lot of those areas that we thought that was going to destroy us, we've grown through them. We've grown through the difficulties, haven't we? when we've conf confronted them and faced them. Friends, when, when you and I wrestle with, with, with your problems, they tend to lose a grip on us. They tend to lose their hold on us. They tend to lose their influence on us when we're willing to face them for what they really are. Joshua, the great Joshua, had to face the fact that he was what? Fearful. Yet he had God on his side. And when you challenge your fears, you learn to do what? Master them. That's why I, you know, I, I've learned this through my life. And I think one of the reasons why God still gives me these challenges that he does is the fact that somehow I've been able to do this, but I have to discipline myself to do this because I too like the security of the known. But because I've understood the fact that we have to accept these things in life, even with the God with us, God will say, listen, don't fear. Be courageous. You can do this. Don't be limited by it. Don't try to deny it's not it. It's there. Like you feel like you're a second grade Christian. You're not a second grade Christian because you've got these things. You haven't lost the spirit. We have to challenge them. We have to confront them. We have to wrestle with them. And in doing that and stepping out of that predictability of what they want to do and limit you, you can actually step over into the promises that God has for you. It's confronting them. Being able to journey with God that you finally come to the open doors that life has for you. When you challenge the fears and master them, you know, you, you, you do these things. One of the reasons why I think sometimes, for me, I stop and I go, how did I get here? And I think it's really a simple thing, is that you have to learn to confront the things that challenge you in God. I heard Joe talk about the fact that the Lord's already been speaking to you about a change of mindset. That's what this is. To change the mindset. It's moving away from the predictable. Friends, if you are anxious today, we're in your, I don't know what your life is, but if you're anxious today, I want to say to you, God is saying to you, don't be afraid, I'm with you. If you're facing 
issues in your own life, whether it's your marriage, your family, your work, whatever it is. Fear of failure, criticism, whatever's trying to resist you in terms of who you are in God today. Lord, say, let's challenge them, confront them, wrestle with them with him, and step through them. Step out. Don't, don't, just don't fall back into the predictability of the comfort of the things. The children of Israel saw signs, wonders, and miracles and provision of God. Yet when the first season of sign of challenge come, they wanted to hightail it back. Don't you hightail it back to your comfort zone this year. Mm. Come on, young people over here. You need, some of you in this plot over here, you've got to get out some, some of your comfort thought areas and step further into the calling that God has on your, that generation, your generation. Someone once penned these words. I want to quote them to you. They're great words, amazing words, but listen to them. It's a poem. So I'm going to read you a poem this morning. I used to have a comfort zone where I knew I couldn't fail. The same four walls of busy work were really more like jail. I longed so much to do the things I'd never done before, but stayed inside my comfort zone and paced the same old floor. I said it didn't matter that I wasn't doing much. I said it didn't, I didn't care about things like dreams and goals and such. I claim to be too busy with the things inside my zone, but deep inside I long for something special of my own. I couldn't let my life go by just watching others win. I held my breath and stepped outside and let the change begin. I took a step with bold new strength I'd never felt before. I kissed my comfort zone goodbye. Then I closed and locked the door. Friends, many of you this morning have got to kiss your comfort zone goodbye and lock the door. Turn to someone and say, I'm going to lock the door. A very simple poem that packs a punch. Are you ready, servants? To take a bold new step in God. Your leader is challenging you to do it. I get sidetracked from a teaching to tell you again to back him up to say you need to do it. One of God's generals, Joshua, this morning is saying, you can do it. And you know... I, I like the story of the, when they crossed over in the wilderness and all that because, you know, we look at them and we think, ah, oh, you know, these guys. But, you know, we're a, little bit, little, we're a little bit like those guys, you see. You know, um, Joshua had to get the people of God to close the door on the wilderness because they had to leave this wilderness mentality behind. And they had to step out of their comfort zone to inherit the promises of God. Thinking about, what do you mean? The wilderness was a comfort zone? Yes, it became a comfort zone for them. So in the wilderness, they were, they were preoccupied with their own well-being. They picked up manna every day. Their clothes hadn't worn out. Not a bad wardrobe to have. <laughs> Therefore, realistically speaking, the wilderness living had become for them a relatively comfortable lifestyle. However, wilderness living brings a sense of futility, purposelessness, even loss of hope. And that's what will do for you if you stay locked within your comfort zone. A sense of futility, a sense of purposelessness, 
and even a loss of hope. And he who has hope has what? Authority and influence. And God wanted the children of God to have what? Authority and influence. Joshua had to challenge them to leave their preconceived ideas behind the reality of living in the wilderness where they got all the food they want and they had wardrobes that didn't wear out. Doing the same things over and over again, hoping things will change, but knowing that they don't change, that won't change anything at all. However, to step into God's promises like they had to do, they had to cross over. And by the way, has any, any of you seen the, 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 the Jordan River? Have you seen it not in flood? You know, it's only a little stream, isn't it? I was quite amazed by that when I first saw that. I thought, man, I could jump this in my youth. I'm going to read the Bible. You know, I, I, I imagine this, you know, I come from, I was born in Tasmania, so I, you know, used to raging rivers. So, so I'm, I'm looking for this raging river because I've read it in the stories of the Old Testament. And when I get there and I drive across it and my guide said, oh, you just, press, you just crossed the Jordan, the Jordan River. And I went, what? <clears throat> that was pretty easy for them to get across from that to there. No, no, no. Joshua got them to step into the promises of God, not when the river was like that, but when? Floods. When it was in full flight. No dams holding back the water. It was raging, raging. And by the way, they had to take possession of the promised land. However, this promised land with all this wonderful stuff within it was what? Inhabited by hostile forces. Let me say this to your friends. Your promised land is inhabited with things that are going to oppose you. Come on. Does that limit the promises of God? Because he said, I will never leave you and I'll never forsake you. But you've got to step out of your comfort zone, out of the zone of the known, out of the zone of the predictable, into the things of God. And as you do, and as you confront these fears, as you challenge these fears, as you embrace these things and wrestle with them like Joshua had to, you become strong, you wobble your way to faith. And as you do that, opportunities open up and doors that were closed open up to you. The promised land was preoccupied with many other things and, what, and they weren't actually waiting for the children of Israel to come across and give them any promises. In fact, they wanted to get them out of there. They had to confront the obstacles. They had to confront, confront their fears. They had to co overcome them and become victorious in God just like you and I have to do that. They had because then when they did that, they went on to inherit the promises of God. And if you want to inherit the promises of God, friends, you've got to change your thinking. You've got to step out of your comfort zone. And this is the year for you to leave your comfort zone behind. To what? Kiss it goodbye and lock the door. Can you do that today? Can you make that statement to God today? You might be feeling a little bit like Joshua. He had to be told four times by God. Friends, if you're stuck in your comfort zone today, we all get there. I've been there. If you're afraid to venture out, I've been there. Remember this. All winners, all winners, all winners, say all. all. All winners, friends, all winners, not some winners, all winners were at one time filled with doubts. They had anxious thoughts. They had a bunch of what ifs. Even as we have learned about Joshua, read the Old and New Testament and you'll find all God's great men and women of faith walk the same path. Friends, understand this. The desire for safety stands against every great and virtuous dream and work in God. And if you want to be part of that, 
you have to step out. Even as, as a new believer in, in Christ, I, I didn't come, as I might, might have told you this before, I wasn't brought up in the church. I came to Christ at about 26 or 20 something or other in the 70s. A black to a white experience, really, for me. And, and this pastor friend, an old pastor friend said this to me. He said, Ben, security many times is the first step towards stagnation. <sighs> Let me say that again to you. This is the comfort zone. Who likes the comfort zone? Come on, honestly, we all do, don't we? Nah, you know, you're not on the blue shirt. You're not in comfort zone, huh? <laughs> Wave to me, huh? Yeah. I'm picking on you, but you're okay, okay. Security many times is the first step towards stagnation. And at that time, you know, I'm looking for a new job and I'm looking for, you know, the Lord's told me to leave my state, come to another place. I'd been brought up on the west coast of Tasmania and, you know, everything was great. I was an engineer in the mines and all this sort of stuff and he wanted me to come and find a house to rent in Winston Hills. Where's that? I said to him. And I had to pay. I had to pay $35 a week rent. I was used to paying $2.50 in the house I was in Tasmania with free oil for the oil eater. I mean, I like some security, Lord. Then he said to me, Ben, always make God your security, not people, places, or things. Very wise and profitable words indeed. They, they help guide me. They still guide my footsteps today. Probably one of the reasons why I do things above my pray grade. You come into my office, you don't find lots of, you know... You know, university of this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. You don't see achievements. You just see, <coughs> I'm holding on. <laughs> you see nail strips. <laughs> you know something? As I study Paul's life in the book of Acts, and, and I begin to listen in to his heartfelt prayer, his prayers to the Lord, there's one of them that hits me and I go, yeah, that's me. It comes from Acts 4.29. And he says, you know, Paul's heartfelt prayer, it's like this, Lord, help me step out in boldness. Help me speak your word and teach the truth. And <laughs> Help me, Lord, go where you lead me. Even on a ship that sinks. And he hands, lands, lands in Malta. The Maltese think, thank God for that. <laughs> thank God he got on the ship to Rome. And Paul gets in and goes, man alive, what am I doing here? And then a revival starts and the healing starts and Malta's transformed. <laughs> Amazing. He said, I'm more shipwrecked than all the people have been shipwrecked. That's another one on my life. You know, kicked out of countries. And you know, I think boldness in vision is the first. Boldness in vision is the first, second, third most important thing to have in your life. Boldness. You know, if you dare nothing, you should expect nothing. I want you to turn to someone and say, if you dare nothing, you expect nothing. I'm going to get out of my comfort zone this week. <laughs> Are you? Philippians 3, 13, Paul writes this. He says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. 
Forgetting the past. Forgetting the things that hold you captive to the, those things that want to lock you up and not allow you to step into your future in God. So friends, whatever obstacle or fear you might be facing in your life today, right now, it's time to factor in God. It's time to step outside your comfort zone. Time to confront. Time to challenge. And time to wrestle your fears and everything that resists you in stepping out into the things that God's calling you to do. Because with him on your side, what you have is always much, much greater than what you may perceive is your lack. Do you want to say that again? What you have and what I have on my side is much, much greater than whatever my perception is of what I lack. Understand this. It's faith that helps us reach the unreachable, touch the untouchable, and see the invisible. It's faith. Faith that enables us <clears throat> to reach within the context of our life to deal with the things that want to hold us back. It's faith, not facts on their own. Yes, you do need to have understanding of the things of God, what God is speaking to you about. But it's faith that enables you to reach out to those things that are unreachable to touch those things that are untouchable that God is calling you to reach out for and also to be able to see the invisible, see the things that are around the corner of your life by trusting God because he's the God of the corner around you. You may not know everything, but if you know him, you have much, much more with you than against you. Don't be like those who wanted to hightail it out of the providences of God, back to the comforts of the predictable and the known. Therefore, my word to you today as servants is this. This year, get out of your comfort zone. Can I have the musicians back, please? This year, get out of your comfort zone. And as you do, I promise you in God, according to his word, that you will see your future open up to you. And I'll take you back to that poem that we read. <coughs> and I'll read the last two stanzas of this. And I want to say to you this morning, if you believe this word is resonating with you this morning, I want you to make no big outlandish commitment. I just want you to acknowledge that God is speaking to you. I don't want you to do anything. I want you to just think about it for a moment. But if you feel that you need to come down the front, come down the front. You need to sort of turn to someone with you and say, That's, that word's for me. Would you pray for me? I want to challenge you. <clears throat> to confront your fears and the obstacles of your life. I want you to challenge them so they do not become those things that dominate you. And I want you to wrestle with them like Joshua had to wrestle with them and like all the men and women of faith who's ever had success in God has had to wrestle with them. And say to yourself this morning, I'm not going to run back to the predictability of what I know. Come on, church. We need to step out of our comfort zone. If you want to see a fresh move of God, if you want to change the things that are in your street, your home, your life, your family, your work, you have a, a job on your hands to do. And it's simple. It's yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I couldn't let my life go by by just watching others win. 
I held my breath and stepped outside and let the change begin. I took a step with bold new strength. I never felt before. That's what happens. You don't feel this until you actually take that bold step. I kissed my comfort zone goodbye and closed and locked the door. Father, this morning, I ask that you would guide and strengthen my brothers and sisters in this place and all that either hear or have seen this message this morning, wherever you are, that you could take a bold new step. And Paul called out to God and cried out, Lord, give me boldness. And that, Lord, that we can, as I say, kiss that comfort zone, that predictability, the thing that security that wants to hold us in a, a stagnant uh, repose, if you like. And, Lord, help us step through to the open door that you have for us. For we are going to see a move of your spirit in this day and time afresh but this day Lord I pray started in me each one of us Amen